So following her rescue from the devastating quarter quell, Katniss awakes in the complex beneath the supposedly destroyed District 13. Guys, what do you all think about just the overall thoughts of uh, Mockingjay Part 1? We'll start with the film hamster himself because you have a special tie to I, the Yes, whole. I do. Go ahead. Um, as, as I've mentioned to you before, I'm a big fan of the, the franchise. Before it was even a movie, um, got involved actually with the a Hunger Games fan site, so I sort of have a little bit of, I feel like I have a vested interest in how these films do. Um, most fans will agree that the third book is not the best book, it's the weakest of the trilogy, so it was interesting to see how that would translate to film. Um, I thought it was actually the, the worst film of the series so far, but uh, wow. was still was still pretty decent. It was a great adaptation, it mostly failed because it followed true to the book and um, it was guilty of some of the same faults. Yeah, what did you think? Well, I'm sort of from the opposite end of the spectrum because I I hadn't read any of those you know books by Suzanne Collins and um, but so the series kind of grew on me. You know, the first one I liked, Catching Fire, the best. This film, like Hamilton said, was was definitely the weakest, um, and I think it's just that it suffers from the dividing up the final book into two parts syndrome. You know, mm. um, it kind of struggles to fill the the two hours. I don't think it's any fault of the director or the cinematographer. I just think it was a, a really uh, spread thin uh, script. Right. Uh, you know, it was a lot different, not as much action. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd agree. I think. You know, it definitely sets up uh, part two for an awesome, you know, final battle. But as one reviewer put it, you know, it was an awesome extended trailer for part two. <laughs> right. You know, <laughs> like, it's like, oh, okay, well, I guess we'll have to wait for part two now. But I, I still thought that I was actually pretty surprised at how suspenseful it was. It, you know, mm -hmm. played out a lot more like a political thriller than, um, you know, as it has been this kind of cool action film. Um, but we can kind of get into that in terms of the direction from Francis Lawrence. So obviously he did um, uh, Catching Fire, and now, you know, he's doing this one. And so he's kind of crafted this new kind of tone for, um, for, for, I guess, part one, and we'll see how part two goes. But, you know, in terms of the new direction, what do you guys think um, about that? You want to roll with this one? <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, I, I think it's going in a good direction. Um, he really did capture the the behind the scenes of the political goings on. Um, it's not quite as obvious in the in the movies so far as the books, but there's a lot going on behind the scenes with manipulation on both sides. Um, both both people. Um, we've got. Uh, President Coyne of District 13 and President Snow of the Evil Capital, and both have their agendas definitely, mm -hmm. and it's really setting up the political aspects to to see some of how that manipulation happens. That the war itself is like the games, even though it's not the games. <laughs> yeah, Just definitely mind games. Michael. Yeah, like it, it definitely opened up to this broader scope even though it kind of felt a little claustrophobic just because a lot of the time is spent indoors and it's this darker kind of more realistic film as far as you know the oppression of the government and it's really kind of overflowed into uh, the whole society and everybody sort of feeling the effects of it and I thought that was interesting and, and like you guys said I thought that you know this is opening it up to you know a huge ending uh, but you know again was it necessary to have a lead up that was two hours long but I did like uh, aspects of it and I thought technically it was well done um, and it was relatively engaging just not as good as Catching Fire. Yeah uh, definitely yeah. and I, I felt like uh, as you said it's kinda like it, you know if they made the final film three hours rather than like splitting it up into like I guess it's gonna be like something like four hours now mm -hmm. like I could have sat through that and I would have really enjoyed it but I do think that um, you know the direction there's obvious there's obviously um, you can feel the director's hand behind it and by that I mean like you know, from the opening uh, with Katniss, you can just tell like she's in a new, different place 
uh, mentally. And mm -hmm. I guess I, I don't read the books. I just watch the movie. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess that comes across in the book. Um, and mm -hmm. so I, I felt that. Um, I felt the weight of each character, you know, um, as we move forward. And so we can kind of get into the performances. We have uh, Jennifer Lawrence, Josh Hutcherson, Liam Hemsworth, Woody Harrelson, uh, Donald Sutherland, Philip Seymour Hoffman in his final performance, and Julianne Moore. So this is like a really good ensemble, actually. Um, and I felt as though um, uh, the performances, except maybe Julianne Moore as the president, it, I didn't really, uh, I wasn't feeling that too much. Um, however, I feel like overall, everyone is like in the zone in terms of their their characters. What did what do you think, Mike? Uh, yeah, I thought the acting. I thought everybody was pretty spot on with with their fulfilling their roles, uh, in, you know, literally and in the film. Their characters fulfilling the roles, the various roles that you know they were sort of had been building up over the last two films. You know, Woody Harrelson has a smaller part, but he's he's great. Uh, you know, he's like kind of sobering up, and this other part of his character is coming out. Uh, I agree with Julianne Moore. You know, she's such a terrific actor that. You didn't really see a whole lot of depth there, but you know, I mean, I, I don't didn't really see anybody else doing it any better than she did. Uh, and of course, Jennifer Lawrence was was terrific. Um, yeah, you know, she you can see her character really evolving in Jennifer Lawrence, and so I think um, she did a really good job there. Yeah, um, I I agree. Um, I think a lot of the supporting characters were a bit underutilized, um, which was to go back one of the uh, the faults I think of the the book coming from strictly Katniss's point of view, and we're stuck in her head so much of the time that it becomes very claustrophobic, um, literally, um, as well as figuratively. Mm. Um, and it didn't quite, I was hoping there would be more character development in the film to escape from that a little bit more and delve into the other characters. Um, but I mean, everybody did a fantastic job. I think they just were underutilized. and. It's a little hard to fault putting Jennifer Lawrence on the screen, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like Hamilton is like the res resident expert on this, so <laughs> so I just throw it out at Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do agree. You know, I think this has been a great series for her, though. You know, because mm -hmm. uh, and as we've talked about before, like she's just a powerhouse actress, and so even though that, um, you know, with this. I guess you can say, I, I mean, personally for me, I'm a little bit tired of seeing her as Katniss Everdeen. I still believe that, like, in this film, it's the human aspect of her. It's It almost can't translate from, from, like, Jennifer Lawrence herself, but it's that relatability mm -hmm. to Katniss that really helps you to enjoy and invest in her character. What were you going to say, Mike? Well, it, yes, I agree, because as, as sort of outlandish as the, the whole theme of the, the film and book series is, she is very believable, I think, as a person going through, you know, this, this situation, this unbelievable situation. She does make it believable and, and relatable, mm -hmm. um, you know, as she does in most of her roles. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Any final thoughts, guys? Mm, other than, you know, being sad to see Philip Seymour Hoffman in his last role, he's such a great actor. Right, tell me about well, it. He, he will be in part two. He will? Uh, yes. Oh, okay. They, they filmed them simultaneously. Resident so. expert. So uh, he, 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 had, he had completed all but like two or three scenes in which they sort of changed up the dialogue. and yeah. So he, he will be appearing in the second that, part. That's cool. Good to know. <laughs> yeah, ah, man, I, we could get off subject uh, with Philip Seymour Hoffman, maybe another episode. But yeah, all right, cool. So that's uh, Mockingjay part one.